Did we look at last week? Who can remind us? What did we look at last week? Yes, Sister Sinew. What did we discuss last week? Last week we discussed about the anger of Moses. The anger of Moses. The anger of Moses. The anger of Moses. What is anger? What did we agree that anger is? Last week we attempted a definition of anger. What did we say anger is? Yes, Friday. We say anger is emotional burst. Anger is emotional outburst. Do you have your outline here? How does the outline define anger? What did you say anger is? Huh? Do you have your outline here? What did you say anger is? Praise the Lord. Proprietor. Sir. What, did, what is anger in our outline? Our uh, outline uh, described anger as a strong displeasure often associated with opposition or hurt. A, is a strong displeasure that is associated with opposition or hurt. Hallelujah. We did say last week that anger has three levels of expression. I mean, five levels of expression. Five levels of expression. Who can remind us of the first one? What is the foundation of anger? What is the first expression of anger? What's the first one? Yes, Mama Ikbele. Mild irritation. Mild irritation. Mild irritation. I hope nobody will irritate me here today. Eh? Hallelujah. No irritation today. Okay? But when you are talking to me and you have bad either body odor or mouth odor, I usually, <laughs> I will turn my ears to you and uh, so that my eyes will not see corruption. We, we, we looked at various expressions of irritation, those things that can cause irritation and uh, all of that. And we said, as much as possible, we should minimize the incidence of irritation. Can we totally eliminate irritation? Huh? You can't. You can't. If NTA news irritates you, don't watch it. Very simple. Eh? NTA news irritates you, don't watch it. I know a man, what irritates him most is uh, this orange. That is the smaller ones. Tangerine. If he perceives the odor of tangerine, he can be sick for another five days. So he stays away from tangerine. Eh? Hallelujah. What is the second level of anger that we saw last week? Who can help us? What's the second level of anger? Mama Ikbele, I thought you gave us the first one. Did you give us the first one? Yes, sir. Uh, you want to give us the second one? Okay, go ahead, man. Indignation. Indignation. Indignation is a deeper level in intensity of mild irritation. It can be an, a reaction to a state you consider to be unfair or something you consider unreasonable. Is an emotional outburst that you see in soccer hooliganism, that you see in 
boundary clashes, two people who had lived together, Mudakeke and Ife, suddenly you just find that they begin to irritate each other. And the, who are these ones in Kataf? Some, remember that one? Zango Kataf. And what's the other group? The Fulanese. The Fulanese and the Zango Kataf people. They've been, they've been living together peacefully for years, but they begin to irritate each other. That's what you find now as an expression in Boko Haram. They had lived peacefully with us, but something just took them over. The devil just got into them, and they are adversaries today. What is the next one after indignation? Who can help us? If you know it, raise your hand. Yes. Wrath. 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 Wrath is only restrainable expression of indignation. When anger reaches this level, you can be sure that vengeance is inevitable. Yes, what's the next one? What's the next expression of anger? Eh? If you know it, raise your hand now. You need to speak to the mic because we are being watched all over the world, as you know. Fury. 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 Fury is this expression in violence. In violence, and it can seem like a temporary insanity where you just think that uh, your brain is on vacation. And what's the last one? What's the last one? Same people. Rage. Rage. Rage is the most intense type of anger that when it overcomes an individual, he may not even be aware of what he had done. He will have murdered his wife before he remembers that that was his wife. And you ask him, what happened? He just has no idea. He just found that his wife is dead. He killed his wife in a rage. How many of us beat our wives here? Aha. Uh -huh. Nobody will answer me now. But when we ask the women, uh, they will, they too will not tell us those husbands that beat them. But the abusers of wives didn't come to church today. They are not here. Hello? Those who beat their wives are not here today. They didn't come to church. Because anyone who beats his wife is an animal. Is a beast. When you beat your wife, you are... And about anything can happen. She can drop dead. And it's only after she's on the ground and she's struggling for breath that you will then, the whole thing will be clear in your eyes that, ah, I've, uh, I've committed murder. The Lord will deliver us from these various levels of anger. I asked a question and I threw it to the care pastors as I reviewed with them what are the characteristics of a dead man? And we went over that and one of the things they told me as we had that review was that a dead man cannot be offended. He said a dead man cannot be offended. Great peace have they that love the law of the Lord for nothing, 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 nothing shall offend them. Are there dead men and women in the house this morning? <laughs> but if we are still offended, are we, are we dead? Eh? The greatest probability is that we are still plugged on progressive sanctification. But that's all right.
Today we are going to be looking at three episodes in the life of Moses where we found expressions of anger. Expressions of anger. The first one is in the book of Exodus chapter 2. Exodus 2 and we'll be looking at verses 10 to... 10 to 12, 10 to 12. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of water, and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren, and he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the earth. Hallelujah. That was the first outing that is recorded for us in scripture of the death, I mean, of the expression of anger by Moses. Don't forget that the, the scene at this time was that Moses had lived in the palace. For how many years? How many years? 40 years. 40 years he had been in the palace and he, he had enjoyed every trapping of a prince. He was being prepared as the next pharaoh of Egypt and things were going well for him. But somewhere on his inside, he had a genetic disconnect from Pharaoh's daughter. And he simply just played along and he was carefully watching the burden of these people whom somehow he had come to know were his own people. And every day something was boiling on his inside. As they made report of the intensity of the burden on the, on, the, on the children of Israel, on the Hebrews, every pain they were feeling, he was feeling in the palace. He would be eating with Pharaoh on the palatial table, and Moses will lose his appetite. He will remember that his people, his people were laboring and slaving and life was intolerable and difficult for them. So one evening, I don't know if it was an evening or an afternoon, he went out to look after the affairs of the Hebrews. And when as a prince, he saw that a Hebrew was being maltreated, there was a scuffle between two people. I, I wouldn't know how he identified one as Hebrew and the other one as Egyptian. Don't ask me. Does anybody know? How did he know one was Hebrew, one was an Egyptian? Yes, Theresa. Was it discernible? Was it easy to identify who an Hebrew is and who an Egyptian was? Yes, Yes, the dressing. A the dressing. Slave, you can identify a slave and a freeborn. You when can you identify them. a slave and a freeborn. You can identify a slave and a freeborn. Hallelujah. Can our colleagues in the office identify our freedom and liberty? Is it possible? 
Can they see that we're different from them? Huh? Okay, do they? Our colleagues in the office, do they? Can they sit down and say, oh, look, this man is different from us. Or there's no difference. Eh? There must be difference. There must be difference. There must be difference. So as he was struggling, as he, Moses knew that this other one that has an upper hand is, uh, is, uh, is an Egyptian. So he got out of his limousine and released his aids. You know, he had courtiers. He released his backup car and all the security staff around him. He said, you go ahead. Go, go, just go, go and leave him alone. So when he saw that he was alone with these two people, he grabbed, he had to assist the Hebrew against the Egyptian and they overpowered this man and he strangled, strangled him to death. I thought you would just separate them and say, why are you fighting here? Don't. You just go your way. You also go your way. But the fact that Moses killed that man, he had transmuted from mild irritation. Can you see? Every, th every day he was irritated. When he read the newspaper on breakfast table and he saw the bondage of the children of Israel, it irritated him. When they brought security report to Pharaoh and they were having breakfast and they were they made 10,000 bricks today. They were building this city, this pyramid. They are two-thirds com completed, 75% completion. Every report irritated him. He felt indignation. And when an occasion occurred, it was in his full anger. When I was in the university, there was a brother, very lovely brother. He would tell me, Brother Jide, these people should not dare me. Because when I'm in my full anger, <laughs> when I'm in my full anger, and I say, what is that? Ah, I say, wait until you see them. And I saw a little bit of that when one of our friends was an unbeliever. He was hooked to pornography. So if you enter their room, uh, you couldn't you see pornographic materials freely on the, on the wall, pasted on his own side of the room. And this, my friend, one day, he was in his full anger. And he said, today, this thing will end. You cannot be torturing our brother like this. It was not his room, or it was his friend's, our friend's room. He went to that side, tore up all the pornographic materials, on the side of the bed, and he said, I'm waiting for him. Let the man come. And truly, the unbeliever came and said, who did this nonsense? And they were ready for a fisty cough. And I couldn't forget that my friend had promised me if I'm in my full anger. So we had to restrain him. I say, we beg, just be cool. Eh? Otherwise, he would have committed murder that day in his full anger. Moses was in his full anger when he saw that a Hebrew was being maltreated. He looked this way, he looked that way, probably looked backwards. The only thing he didn't do was to look up. He didn't look up. He took this Egyptian, he slaughtered him, and buried him in a shallow grave. And Moses would have thought he was fighting on behalf of God. But wasn't he? Was he fighting on behalf of God? Let somebody talk to me. Eh? 
Was he fighting a just cause? Who wants to build the cart? Was Moses just, was he, no, not that if he was justified. Was he fighting a righteous cause? If a people had been in servitude for over 300 years, was it not time for them to be delivered? Or about 300 years at that time. They had been under bondage for that long. And rather than helping them, you want to kill them. And uh, he took the thing and slaughtered the man. Was he fighting on behalf of God? Yes, Brother Ivan Benikaro. Was he fighting on behalf of God? That was his intent. That was, that he must have thought that he was fighting for God. But he, he thought was, he was fighting he was, on behalf he was of God. definitely wrong. It was wrong, because yes. When two parties are fighting and the third person comes in, his duty is to separate them and make sure that uh, there's amicable settlement between the two. And by killing that person, he's disobeying God, he's disobeying the law of God. Because he's not the one that created their life and he had no authority or no right to take the life. Okay. Today we're not going to look at whether Moses was wrong or right. But we just want to look at the element of anger. That how did he get to this crescendo? Because to kill a person is not easy now. Huh? Will you call that premeditated murder? Was it uh, manslaughter? Or it was... Brother uh, Nipong, what do you say? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, at this time, it was 390 years into captivity. 390 years. It was 390 years. Thank yes. you. Thank you for helping me with that. So, and uh, we know that Moses was under the tutelage of his mother. Moses. He must, have, he, was, he must have had his story, the history. I mean, the promises of God that at the 400 years, they were going to be delivered from the land of Egypt. Yes. So it remains 10 years more. And who knows what dreams Moses had been having. About, maybe he might have even been seeing himself leading the people out of that place. So that was an opportunity for him to start doing something for God, to him. And he went and killed somebody. It is not justified in, you know, from normal point of view, on the point of law. But from his experience, he thought he was fighting for God. And there are some people who fought and killed for God, and it was taken as zeal for them. Like the, somebody like Phinehas, who was having an affair with Cosby. He killed, I mean, uh, Phinehas killed Cosby and uh, Zimri, who were having, and God took it as zeal. God did not take it as murder. So from his own point of view, he didn't see it as anything that is bad. But generally speaking, and you know, um, looking at it secularly, you might say that it's wrong. Okay, thank you very much. So much has been provided by Brother Ladipo. They were 390 years at this time in bondage. The uh, story must have been told to Moses. And somewhere in his heart, he must have been nursing an ambition to be a deliverer of his people from captivity. And he saw a brilliant opportunity to express himself along those lines, and he did not lose it. He simply took the Egyptian and slaughtered him and buried him in a shallow grave. How do you, what tells you that God disapproved of this? Or let's start from here. Did God disapprove of what Moses did? Yes, who sang? Praise the Lord. God did not uh, in any way disapprove what Moses did. Pabi? God did not in any way disapprove what Moses did. Why do you think so? In fact, that is what, that is what qualified Moses to be the deliverer of the children of Israel. Uh oh. Yes. From God's standard, because God understood that he had passion for, for, for his tribe. Let's remember that Moses had no generation because the Egyptians killed everybody in his, in his lifetime. 
And so he grew up with that understanding that he had no brother of his age because these wicked people killed them. And if God didn't like uh, what Moses did, the same God would not have gone ahead in future to have killed the Egyptians in, in the Red Well, uh, I don't know where to put that, you sang. But the joy I have is that you will get married this year. <laughs> Usang, I don't know this new theology you are bringing to this thing. No. But I, I'm not one, sure. One, I'm more, not, one more thing, sir. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not sure they agreed with you from the, from the expression. You can see that majority did not agree with you. Uh, who thinks God disapproved of what he did? Yes, ma'am. Little bright. I actually think God disapproved of what he did because looking at it literally, I don't see what the Egyptian has done to, to warrant Moses killing him at that point. Fine, they have disobeyed God and everything, but taking the judgment in his own hand that time was not right. All right. Did she answer our question? Not so clearly. Who, is, who wants to say something? Aha. Uh -huh. Ngozi, did God approve or disapprove? How do you stand on this? Did he approve? I will say that God disapproves of it. God disapproved. How do yes. you know? Um, if he did, when the other occasion came, he would not have allowed Mos uh, Moses... Secret yes. to be known. He wouldn't have allowed let's, this let's, come to let's light. Let's celebrate her. Let's celebrate this lady. Celebrate her now. You didn't know the answer. And you are jealous. Eh? You are jealous. Because if you see the next um, verse, where is this one now? Right. I'm trying to see the second day, verse 13. And when he went out on the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, why smitest thy fellow? And he said, who made you a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely. This thing is known. And now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by well. What Gozi has said is this, that if God truly approved, if he approved of what Moses had done, this matter would have been an eternal secret. Do you know God was able to do that? Huh? God was capable of doing that. Nobody will know. It would just have been something he did and it's, uh, it's, all, it's, it's, it's all gone. Nobody took record of it. But no, heaven exposed him. And that was the beginning of his journey to the plan and purpose of God in the land of uh, in the wilderness, in the wilderness. And he was there for another 40 years. We're going to be taking the three this, this morning. I want us to finish with this anger matter this morning. The second episode is in chapter 32. Chapter 32. Kwame? Okay, Julius, you have a question. Why not? Sir, my question is this. Is there room for holy anger? Yes. Uh, we, we are going to... That will be our conclusion today. That's where we are going to conclude today. So don't let's... Uh, don't let's preempt this so that we can have a lively debate and then close on that. Uh, because there is provision for... The, we'll see the type of anger that is allowed... In the categorization of anger that we have heard, the one that the Bible truly allows, 
which is even for a short time. Okay? I don't want us to go, go there just now. Let, let's, let's take it step by step. Hallelujah. Exodus 32. Exodus 32. And we are looking at verses 15 to 20. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. The tablets were written on both their sides, on one side and on the other were they written. And the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise, I'm reading verse 17, the noise of the people as they shouted. He said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, when he saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tablets of his hand and break them beneath the mount, and he took the calf which he had made and burnt it in fire and ground it into powder and strode it upon the water and bade the children of Israel to drink of it. Hallelujah. We're familiar with this story. Hello? How many days had it been with the Lord? Huh? 40 days? Was there a catering service? Was there a catering service? Huh? There was water supply? 40 days, 40 nights without food, without water. And the record we have is that on the 40th day, the Lord began to speak to him. And he told him, your people whom you brought from the land of Egypt have gone a worry. Hello? What did Moses do when God told him that? Bible students, what did Moses do? Huh? Yes, ma'am. As you. You are supposed to see me. I haven't seen you. Okay. Let's go now. He interceded on their behalf. He interceded on their behalf. Moses interceded on their behalf. And he... I want to see if I can find the intercession. I can't see it. Verse 11. Okay. Okay. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does thy wrath? Can we see that? Was God angry? What level of anger was God at this time? Eh? Wrath. 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 Hot against thy people. Which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Whereof should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath. Did you see that? And repent of this evil which you have done. Remember Abraham and Isaac and thy servants to whom thou swearest by thy own self and said unto them I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and all the land this land that I have spoken unto you will I give unto your seed and they shall inherit it forever and the Lord repented of the evil which he taught to do unto his people I want us to see this story in context Moses did not know what was happening. It was known only to God. 
And God volunteered that information to Moses and said, Look, your people have gone a worry. God did not give him the details of what happened, but he had enough information to know that God was furious. You know what I still can't understand about this expression of anger? Was that if you knew so much about what the people had already done, and you had precious things in your hands like the Ten Commandments, the stones were healed by God, you remember that? The handwriting was the handwriting of God, you remember that? The handy over was the handy over of God. And God gave it to him as a permanent record of his statutes. When Moses then got close to see what had happened, because at this point, the people had started, they rose, they ate, they drank, and they began to play. And Moses saw them, he saw, in fact, they had stripped. They were doing live show. How many of us have gone to live shows before? They won't answer me now. Eh? I got to Switzerland and uh, a colleague invited me, he said, let's go and see live show. I said, this fellow doesn't know who he's talking to. I told him I'm a dead man. Live show is, is a height of pornography. It's live pornography. They were doing live show. They were naked. And they were dancing and sweating. And when Moses got to the base of the mountain, he was, he was in his full anger. And I said to myself, shouldn't Moses, even if he wanted to express his displeasure, shouldn't he have put the two tablets down eh? put them down and begin to box himself eh? <laughs> but no he he threw down the two tablets that were handed over to him by God and he broke them he threw them down and broke them why did he break those things Eh? temporary insanity but did he have a spiritual import for the church today can we link what Moses did although it was foetitious can we link it to the state of the church today in the giving and the receiving of the law and in the consummation the fulfillment of the law in Christ can we see that was that depicted for us? Nobody can draw a link. Wow. Eh? Everybody is looking at me. Okay. Let, let, let's leave that. Let, let, okay. Uh, Daddy, I thought I wanted to leave it for them as an assignment to go and look at it. You have an answer. Okay, give us an answer if you have. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if we know why Christ went to the cross, why he died, it was on account of sin. Because God cannot tolerate sin and does not tolerate sin. Sin had to be punished. And so the death he died was uh, God's expression and judgment upon sin. So the church must not condone it in any form. All right. Okay. Uh, that, that's not where I'm going, Daddy. I, I'm going to leave this for you as an assignment. I need you to go and look carefully at the New Testament, and you will report back to me next week how the breaking of the first testament that was given had to be broken. For the second one to come. Huh? It had to be broken. It had to be broken. It had a spiritual import. 
what he did in anger was fulfilling also what was soon to happen to the church of God. You are going to tell me next week how that is so. But let's leave that aside today. Hello? Are you with me? Do you understand the question? You need to go and study Corinthians very closely and see Moses' action described and put in context by Paul to the Corinthians church. Now, was Moses acting on behalf of God in the expression of this anger? Was he acting on behalf of God? Was he angry for God or for himself? Huh? Was Moses acting for himself or he was angry for God? Yes, Teresa. Praise the Lord. I think it's both ways. After interceding for them on behalf of their sin, when God was telling him about all that they have done and he wants to bring his judgment upon them, yeah. coming down from the mountain, he was expecting to see a repentant people. But was he? I think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Because he didn't, the people didn't know that uh, Moses was watching uh, the movie from the mount. So they wouldn't have come to a point of repentance. Aaron was still uh, leading them and they were having a ball. Yes, was he acting for God or did he think he was acting for God? Yes, uh, my sister. He wasn't acting for God. I think he was thinking because he was the first person that pleaded on behalf of the, the Israelites. Yes. Because God wanted to take action. He said no. He pleaded. So how come he came down, saw the scene, and got angry? He did it not because God asked him. You know, most times in our lives when somebody is angry about another person and it doesn't concern us, it's easier for us to say, please forgive the person, forgive the person. But when we come face to face with that same or even less a situation, you see the outburst in us. So he actually pleaded. Okay. And God forgave. And God did not instruct him to do what he did. So why did he go ahead to be that wrath with them? That wasn't the only thing he did though. He also asked them to get sword and begin to kill each other. Huh? Pabi? It was a weakness. Give her the mic. Thanks, uh, sweetheart. Yes? It was the witness in Moses that he has not dealt with that started to play out again. He started to play out again. Yes. He was not... Did he think it was... Was it a holy anger? Well, I don't think it's a, a holy anger. I don't think there's any Julius, anger that is holy. Would that be, he, is that, was that a holy anger? Eh? <laughs> you have no answer. Tell us, was it the holy anger in your own judgment? Was he, was it holy doing what he did? Uh, actually, I, I can't say it's a, a holy anger. I will concord with what uh, uh, Mommy Adebile said. Uh, I'm sure it was uh, his the weakness in him that was playing out at that time that he has he was unable to deal with couldn't handle yeah. it the thing surfaced all over again hallelujah let me help you because we don't have much time just to see that the lord did not approve of what moses did God showed disapproval. Look at that chapter 34. Chapter 34. And let's look at verses 1 to 4. And the Lord said to Moses, Heal thee two tablets of stone 
like unto the first. And I will write upon these tablets the words that were in the first tablets, which thou breakest, and be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me in the top of the mount. And no one shall come up with you, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before the mount. And he healed two tablets of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Hallelujah. Who healed the first two stones? Huh? God healed the first two. God was no more there to heal the next two. Huh? Why did God not heal the two, the next two stones? Why did God not heal the you don't confuse my English now. Why didn't God make the first two stones as he did at first? The second set of stones. Why was it that Moses had to do it? Huh? Nobody is thinking. Sister Obodera. Let's see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think to serve as a punishment. One, to Moses, and to show God's disapproval. To show God's disapproval. I agree completely with that. God, tacitly, in a very subtle way, expressed his displeasure about the breaking of the first two stones that were destroyed. Don't forget that it was God that hewn those stones. Those were stones that would have been preserved and maybe it will be somewhere hiding in a museum today, direct making of God, stones that were made by God. And it was in the handwriting of God. But Moses shattered them out of anger. By God asking him to go and get his own stones, God was saying several things. One of the things God was saying was that he didn't agree with the outburst of anger. That was very clear. Secondly, God was saying that Moses disrespected him in breaking those two stones. Although that action was to become the state of the church that was to be the next beneficiary of the second stones that were hewn for our redemption. Because it will remove the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh that we may have one way and one heart that we may serve him and love him for our own good and for the good of our children after us. Hallelujah. So God was not happy with him. Even though Moses thought that anger was expressed on behalf of God, it was actually not to God's approval. God disapproved it, and Moses had to hew the next two stones. Were they the same in quality? Huh? They couldn't be. They couldn't be because the one that was done by God was perfect. It was, it was perfect. In your looking at the question I posed to you, you must see all of this in context. And come back next week with an answer, alright? And next week we are going to continue from there. This morning we have to stop now because Buchi is already looking at her watch. And we want to go into the Sunday school rally uh, by her programming. One thing that is so clear this morning is that there are many things that God has made that we can destroy out of anger. Many, many things that God had organized for our lives, but out of anger we had thrown them into the dustbin. 
with our two eyes open. And God is watching. And when we cry back to him, God gives some of these things back to us, but they will not be in the original state. Hallelujah. Julius raised a question which I thought we were going to close with next week. Hello. We are told in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26 to be angry, but to sin not. And we should not let the sun go down on our wrath. That's how the King James Version put it. In James chapter 1 and verse 19, the Bible says, Where of my brethren, let every man be swift to hear, and slow to speak, and slow to wrath. We're going to deal with that more next week. But the, the two expressions that we have seen in Moses, in my view, they do not qualify for holy anger. They were anger that were manufactured in the heart of Moses. Let's rise to pray. Moses had information on the mount, clear information about what was going on. He had information enough for him to have digested and allow anger to not to be too compelling in his heart when he got to see the actual scene. But that thing, the old man in him, had not been fully dealt with. The thing resurrected again. Are there some things that were dying on your inside and were making you closer to the nature of God? But they seem now to be getting off your fingers. I want us to cry to the Lord and ask him to help us. That what is dead will remain dead and will never resurrect again. Is there a habit you had for drinking, habit for women, habit for smoking that had died and they seem now to be resurrected again? You have an opportunity to cry to the Lord. Your two hands in the air. And say after me, Holy Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the life of Moses. Thank you for a great man like Moses. Thank you for my own life. Thank you for my own life. Thank you for the things you are working in me. Thank you for the habits that are dying. Some of them, Daddy, seem to be resurrecting again. Talk to him about them. Talk to him about them. Those habits that are resurrecting, they are having life again. <coughs> they, are, they are having life all over again. Let's cry to the Lord and say, Lord, these habits will never rise again. Sexual immorality that seems now to be festering all over again. The, the, the habit of anger. The feeling of hatred for other people, unforgiveness that he thought was gone, is now coming up again. Ask the Lord to deal with them. Ask the Lord to deal with them so that you can be free all over again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this hour and this time that we have spent in your presence. Thank you for the instructions we have received in the life of Moses, a man whom you sent to the wilderness to go and be with animals so that his nature of anger can be fully dealt with. Lord, Moses too thought that this habit was gone until he came down and saw the calf. That in every calf that we will see that we resurrect our old habits. Deliver us from them in the name of Jesus. Amen. May our eyes never behold them. Amen. Thank you, our God, for hearing. And God's people say a big amen. amen. Praise the Lord.
This morning we are altering the order of service.